Hey, I'm Marty, and welcome to another C++ programming video about games. So here's the game where we had it last time at the end of last video. You can see we have our player here, our normal player, plus a different player, which this player is being rendered using vertex rays. Also, the colors on my face might not be showing up correctly. I might look like a Simpson, I might look a little yellow or blue sometimes, so just bear with that. I'm going to upgrade my Linux because I have a feeling it has something to do with actual software, like cheese has just been so irritating. For some reason, if I move my hands like this, then the color seems to go normal, and I move my hands away, and then it, yeah, it makes me look like a Simpson. So I'm hoping to upgrade to Linux Mint 19 in a couple days here, when I have spare moments. So with that said, yeah, if I look a little funny, that's why. First of all, what we want to do is concerning our textures, let's actually go into our files this quick second. We don't actually want to scale, pre-scale our textures, that's a bad idea. So, I'll show you what I mean in a quick second here. Right, so, this player texture here, if we open it up with GIMP or something, just hold on, GIMP takes a while to load. Then, if I scale it down, you can see that, okay, it's definitely a way larger image, which is not what you want, which makes it a bigger file size. You definitely don't want that. For example, if you were going to release this game for, on a smartphone or something, we want this to be as compact as a file can possibly be. So, if we use a smaller file size, smaller pixels, this is going to reduce our general file size by significantly. So the other day I whipped up this guy second here, which he looks pretty awesome for pixel art. I didn't really like the design style of this guy having the black outline. It doesn't really matter which, it doesn't really matter the style of artwork you use, just keep it consistent is the biggest key. So this layer looks nice and consistent, it looks good. I've also got another ground texture around here somewhere. Right here, you can see that. Zoom in. So. With that said, we're going to be loading up that. But you can also see that this here is as small as it can be if I use the pixel tool. You can see it's one pixel per pixel. So that we can scale it in the game, yes, but we don't want to necessarily scale it before we load it into the game. That just creates a bigger file size for no reason. Anyway, moving on from that, so let's go into main CPP, into our main C++ file. So I'm going to be loading them up. I believe it was axe underscore warrior. This is right here, me just loading up a different png file 24 by 20 one thing you might be noticing about the player is that actually we're, what are we doing like are we going to be using this entire thing as a detectable square not eventually that's not the plan we don't want to include we honestly want the detectable square to be about here for collision with the enemies and with the platforms we don't want to include this this little section here we can include that we can like make a hitbox just for attacking enemies but for simplicity wise, we're going to take this one step at a time. So it's 24 by 20. If we save and run this a second, we should see that we do have a different sprite loaded or a different texture. And yes, we do. He's a lot smaller though, but he is scaled. And you can see here, it's pretty obvious. You can see the shaking a little bit on the screen, which we want to clean that up. Let's head over to our player.hbp. We're going to need a few more public functions. Now, the first one is going to be a unsigned int. And we, why are we using an unsigned wit int? We're going to be using this for the absolute width of our player. The reason why we want to go with unsigned integer is if we are like rotating our player or something, or if we were our transform arrow player and make like squishing him flat or something, and then his two vertices go like this, right? We want to make sure that's unsigned, otherwise it'll be a negative number, and we don't want to deal with a negative number. That's why I go with unsigned. Unsigned int is basically an integer that has no positive or negative, it's just the complete pure number, right? So we're going to go with, and we're going to call this m underscore, the m underscore convention, this is just saying that it, it's ease of use. So that this tells us if we're working inside the player class, m underscore, anything that has m underscore in it has to do with player class, right? So we're going to be dealing with a lot of, all, like, <laughs> using vertex arrays is definitely a lot lower level than just using sprites. So we're going to want to keep this clear and concise. So we can go ab size, this is the absolute size, and we're going to turn this into a array, to a too big array, or not a too big array, an array that is too members into it and we're just saying it exists here so we don't have to set it equal to anything for now so next thing we want to do is we can use go float and we want to use floating numbers for m underscore center position because we're going to be using the center position later on here if you take a look at this long line of code the, we're setting the center of the view right we're setting the center of the view to the center of the player but you see all this extra big line of code, right? That's a lot of code. If we can keep all that wrapped up nicely in player.hbp, it's going to be a lot 
cleaner to deal with later. And again, we're going to create this into an array so that we don't have two different variables, just one variable name that has two sub variables in it. And the reason why we want to use a float here and an integer here is because the integer is just going to be the size and then the float can actually change by very small the position can change by very small numbers. So that's why we're using a float. And again, we're going to want to go with float. So we're also going to want to create another float. And this is going to be float m underscore half size. So, and the reason we're using a float here and not an int, because right here we already used the unsigned int. So if we're going to be recalculating using this value here, it's going to be fine. And this again is going to be an array that is too large or not too large. I keep saying too large it has two elements in the array if you're speaking scientifically. We are also going to want to create a float and this is m underscore scale. For now we're not going to be doing a lot of scaling with our player. We can actually zoom in and out with our camera right hold on right here. Uh, we can actually set the zoom if we go uh, view dot zoom we can actually set the zoom scale here so we have no reason to scale our player right now but eventually we might want to scale our player if we like ate like you know like in mario brothers you know the bigatron mushroom I, I don't know what you call that but the giant mushroom so for example if we did have that we would want to use our scale and again we are going to want to use an array so that we can use one variable name except have two variables that's what array is has two elements in this array because for example if we don't want to scale both our width and height by the same number we can that's why we have two values Next, we're going to need some booleans, and these booleans we will use later, and that is m underscore collide. This boolean is just there. It's going to exist so that we can, when we're dealing with collision detection, so we can just not initialize it for now. That'll be fine. Bool and m underscore on ground. This is dealing with gravity again, so that this way we can only jump if we're on ground. We're going to need these variables later. All right, now save that file and let's switch over to a player.cpp file. So first thing we want to do is actually take out this line of code that says m transform.scale. For some reason, I is it makes it extremely difficult to work with when we actually scale our player using the transform class i'm not sure if there's a bug of some kind what it seems to me like is that the sfml library that there's some unfinished parts so for example with vertex arrays there are a few unpolished parts that are it's a little sketchy to work around but it's definitely doable if we did actually scale this first thing we'd have to do is we'd have to scale our texture and then we'd want to scale our actual vertices because just scaling just our texture gives us not a lot to work with because then that, then it starts to get really confusing fast because if, because if we've only scaled our texture and the vertices that are underneath it are still the same size gl collision detection is gonna be absolute garbage it's just a pain so right here we want to calculate our absolute width and height once okay so let's go m underscore ab size and we're going to be dealing with element zero which is actually the first element in array when you're dealing with programming you typically always start counting at zero and we shall set that equal to m underscore ver vertices open up some square braces and we're going to start we're going to start with zero position and then we can subtract from this because we're starting with the zero position minus the next position and that will give us the difference so the difference is the absolute size but before we can subtract from that we have to deal tell the compiler we're dealing with the position dot x and now we can subtract from it m underscore vertices open up some square braces and this time we're going to be dealing with the one position and add dot position dot x and in that line with the semicolon, hit enter. So we can just copy this code so we don't have to retype it, control C. And once again, we can start with the zero position and instead of dot x dot y minus the third position, the third vertice actually, or the fourth vertice. This is, uh, can be confusing when you're talking programming and then numbers. And, just, and, is, and again, instead of dot x dot y. So let's actually just do a quick STDC out. I see, yes, we have included the IO stream, so let's go std colon colon c out, and let's see om underscore ab size. We only want to do this once because there's no reason to do it more than once. And some more angular brackets, and let's go m underscore ab size, open up some square braces, and the second position or the second element in the array. And we don't have to end the line, we're only printing it once. Control save, so let's go to our compiler compile that and I see we have an error unsigned does not exist because I spelt it wrong that's right you need to end in there control save 
So let's compile and run this, and we should have we should be printing out our absolute size, which should be 24 and 20, which we're not. Yes, our player does exist, although smaller. Close out, and we see we have these insanely large numbers, and that's because oh yeah, we did not do our math quite right. We are subtracting. Yeah, we got the order backwards, so you, you can't subtract five from zero. It just doesn't quite work when you're dealing with unsigned ints. So we got to switch that around three and zero. So this should give us 20. All right, let's compile and run this, and we should be able to print out 24 and 20. So yes, let's close out. We should see in our compiler here, yes, 24 and 20, perfect. So that's working exactly the way we want it. Let's just set our scale to something in a second. Actually, that would be the first thing we do here. So let's go m, m underscore scale equals, we're not going to do any scaling just yet. We have no reason to because we can actually, like I said before, we can just zoom in and out with our camera. Control save. Now that we know our absolute size, let's calculate half of our absolute size. So let's go m underscore half size. We're going to start with the first element in our array. We're going to set that equal to m underscore ab size. And the first element in that array divided by, divided by 2. So this is just going to divide it by 2, giving us half of our size. Enter and then m underscore half size. Pulling up some square braces and the second member in our array, or the second element in our array. We're going to set that equal to m underscore ab size and the second, hold on, second member in that array or element, depending on what you call it. It doesn't really matter. So, in the line with the semicolon, one thing I haven't mentioned it a lot is commenting um, when you should use it and when you shouldn't use it. Commenting is, is basically where you make a bunch of code, or just a, it's just a comment. It doesn't actually do anything in the code. When should you comment? Definitely when you have something that looks odd, you couldn't really guess what exactly what that does from just glancing at it. So that's where you would want to use a comment. In this case, we can kind of see what's going on. So there's no real need to use a comment. Carrying on, so let's go M underscore and let's go center pause. Depending, do Americans spell center? Center like that or do they spell like this, like they do in Canada? I'm not sure. I just know Canada we spell it like center. Or do we? Yeah, yeah, that's right. Yeah, okay. Good. We're going to use the first element in that array. We're going to set that equal to. Now, there's two ways we can go about this. We can use our second vertice, then subtract our absolute width from it, or we can just use the first vertice, then add our absolute or ha absolute half width to it. So, the, uh, using the latter option is definitely simpler. So, let's go m underscore vertices and open up some square braces we're going to use the first member in the array and we're going to add m underscore half size and the first member in that array and how do we know that we are dealing with width here by going with zero well typically always width comes before height so that's why width is zero and height is one so that's how we always know never change it because that's the only way we always know now let's do the same thing for m underscore cent, center pause. We'll grab some square braces and the second element in the array. And we're going to set that equal to, uh, where is equals? There we go, m underscore vertices. And we're going to be using, let's see, yeah, we're going to be using the first, again, first element in the array. Hold on a second, what am I doing? What am I doing? We've got to go dot position dot x. Otherwise, I has no idea what you're talking about. Position dot y this time. And we're going to add to it, so plus m underscore half size and the second member in that array as well. So this should calculate the center size of our camera. So if we save that, let's head over to main.cpp. And now if we set the view.setCenter to, so hold on. Yeah, having that excessively long line of the code isn't really helpful. It's definitely much tidier and nicer to keep all that neatly tucked in here. That's a good spot for it. So anyway, and let's go with a SF colon colon vector to F. Open up some more square rate or parentheses, I should say. And M, or actually not M. First we want to go player because, yeah, just player. So just player dot M underscore because we're dealing with the player's member. And that is center pos. Open up some square braces, starting with the first element in the array, which is Again, the x position and m, or actually player 
dot m underscore center pause and this time the second element in the ray that should pinpoint us our camera at the exact center of our player or our, our secondary player so control save this should work i don't see any bugs so far so looks all good yes we do have a bug over in player.cpp uh, i was treating the scale as if it wasn't an array which actually is so we have to go with the first element in the array zero so control c and we have to do the same thing for the second element in the array and we should be fine no errors that was the only error i saw so we should be good yes we are focused exactly on the center of our secondary player if we move our guy over yeah all good all good with that said i hope you guys enjoyed the video and also i want to say if you guys do find any code improvements that makes the code run faster or it's easier to read, definitely feel free to use them and let me know in the comment section too and I'll probably use them too. I'm definitely no pro. So if you guys have a code suggestion or improvement, feel free to leave that down in the comment section. I'm not going to be like, oh, looks like Joe Schmo doesn't like my videos. Like, I'm not going to be at all offended if you know a better way to code something. So again, feel free to leave that down in the comment section. Thanks for watching and subscribing and I'll be seeing you guys next video.